Entertainment's Nels Anderson is here to show off a mission from their stealth ninja follow-up to Shank. Yeah. It's got blood. Hey guys, it's me, Anthony. I want to know if you were a fan of the Shank games. You know, those, those 2D, crazily well-animated, super violent beat-em-ups, because I loved them, and I was excited to see a preview of Clay Entertainment's follow-up at PAX East earlier this year. It's a 2D stealth action game called Mark of the Ninja. Joining me in the studio here is Nels Anderson, who's the lead designer of the game. Nels, I need you to look directly into the camera and let us know that this is not just Shank with ninjas. <laughs> this it, is, it, this yep. is not Shank with ninjas, right? It is absolutely not Shank with ninjas. No. Um, um, like what we did is we basically took all this, all the, all the really, really like low-level stuff from Shank, right? Yeah. Like the, the like the really stylized fluid animation, the really tight controls, really good game feel, and they done something completely different with it. Okay. That was the idea. So it's basically, I mean, it's the same art team. It's got that yep. same fluid look, but you guys are, are going in a completely different direction yes. in terms of gameplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is 2D stealth. Yep. Uh, <laughs> which is which is cool. This is a very different thing, and and. What made you decide to go 2D stealth? Are you a big stealth fan? I am. Personally, I love, love, love stealth games. Like, like kind of, Thief was the one that sort of was the key that opened that lock, no pun intended, I guess. <laughs> um, but for, for that, that happened but anyway. It happened anyway. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and that was kind of the thing that started off, and ever since, like, like Hitman Blood Money is one of my favorite games ever. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the Thief series, you know, the, uh, the earlier Splinter Cells, especially the ones that Clint Hawking was involved with, like, those are all some of my favorite games. Um, a big part of that is because I love the gameplay flow of stealth games. Like, the way I think about it is most character-based action adventure, whatever, games, uh, the gameplay flow is all about push. Like, you walk into some area, the game spawns some dudes that come charging at you, and it's all about reaction and survival. Yeah. And that's fine. Like, that, like you can build great games that way. Way. But I like stealth games because they're far more about pull. Because you're fundamentally undetected, right? You're sneaky, so it's on the play. Like the world is just kind of running, and the player like can sort of ascertain things and kind of poke and prod at the world, kind of at their own impetus, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and that's interesting. There's a lot of really good meat there, so that's that's what we wanted to get at. And of course, 2D is just kind of our wheelhouse. So we're like, let's take these two insane things and put them together. <laughs> and I almost when I when I played this at PAX East, I was a little worried that the 2D for some reason, I felt like 2D is gonna make this too easy. And I don't know why huh. I felt this way, because you can see way more than you can normally see. The, well. Like, like your, your playing field is restricted to the two dimensions then, right? Yeah. So I was thinking, oh, well, it's gonna be much easier. My choices are gonna be much more limited. How do you kind of create an in-depth stealth gameplay on that 2D plane. Right. So, I mean, just for the sheer perceptiveness, originally, so maybe this wasn't even in, I think it was in the PAX East build you checked out, mm -hmm. but you, you actually have a notion of line of sight in the game where any area that your character can't see kind of gets like this gray fog of war thing mm -hmm. because when, like initially way back in the prototypes, we didn't have that and everything, it just looked super weird, super, yeah. super weird. Like the levels didn't really have like a cohesiveness to them. They didn't look like, a, it just looked like elevator action yeah. or something, right? And it was super lame. But as soon as we put that in, we're like, oh, because now you have to be more deliberate, more intentional. Like that's kind of how we got at a lot of that stealth stuff in terms of the, the situational awareness is, okay, well, here, you know, you can like peer through a door without having to commit to be on the other side of it, but you can't see in there unless you're actually close enough to do like that peeking thing. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and then just in terms of the, like the actual relationship between the ninjas and obviously the people that are looking for you, um, is obviously, yeah, so what's like the core fundamental stealth action in a 3D stealth game? Guy's coming, I'm gonna hide around the corner. In 2D, <laughs> you yeah. don't have any corners. <laughs> um, so it ended up being like, okay, well we ended up giving the player a lot of different types of movement ability. So it's like, you can climb on any wall, you can climb on a bunch of the ceilings, you've got an awesome grappling hook that lets you get into places that aren't really in the enemy's like sp spatial control with their vision and other senses. So that's kind of how we ended up getting at that. Okay. Yeah. And you guys, I mean, Shank was known for its, its combat system, and it's, it's got this very intense, like, brawling system yeah. to it. Uh, did you bring any of that into Mark of the Ninja? Because it feels like it would just turn into... Yeah. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, initially we did have a bit more of a robust combat system that we kind of prototyped, and it just didn't really work. Mm -hmm. Like, people, even if it's not... The, the most interesting or engaging way to a play game. If there's a successful way that's kind of boring, but it works, a lot of people will do that. Because yeah. obviously, you know, a lot of games are framed in terms of success, right? So it's like, oh, here's this kind of boring thing, but it gets me through it, so I'm gonna do it. 
and that was totally not like how the game was interesting or fun or anything else. So we kind of had to keep paring that back until we got to a point where it's like, oh yeah, if you're detected, you kind of have some means to defend yourself and either escape or quickly take out a guy and then escape, whatever. But you can't just motor in there and murder dudes. It does not. Mm -mm. Okay, so you have a you have a very limited set of I won't want to say limited, but very specific yes. set of skills yes. that work in a very specific set uh, of if if you're like if you're detected exactly, and then like most of the abilities are all about kind of manipulating the enemies, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, this guy's, you know, the way he's looking, he's controlling this chunk of space, I want him over there, I'm gonna do something to move him over here, or I'm gonna do something to this guy, like, I'll use some weird hallucinogenic poison or something. So he'll get all freaked like out. Like you do. Like you do, you know. Mm -hmm. I did that to you earlier. <laughs> Look forward to it. That sharp prick when you sat down, hmm, bugs in your skin. <laughs> I can feel them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, you know, you poison a guy, he becomes all freaked out and terrified, which means anytime you make a noise, he's just gonna flip out and start shooting at it. Okay. So then you can get him <laughs> near some of his buddies, you drop a thing down there that makes a noise, he flips out, shoots a bunch of them, and you take him out when he's the only poor freaked out dude left standing. That's kind of awesome. Okay, yeah. so this is cool. Uh, Nels is going to show me one of his favorite chunks of gameplay in Mark of the Ninja in just a moment. But hey, you know who's allowing this entire thing to happen? Gamefly is. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice from over 8,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at just $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time, keep them for as long as they like. Once you're done playing a game, you send it back. Gamefly sends you the next game on your list. Gamefly members can also play hundreds of PC games for free now with unlimited PC play. New Challenger viewers get a 15-day free trial when they go to Gamefly.com slash Challenger you are a new Challenger viewer. That means you get a 15-day free trial. So go to Gamefly.com slash Challenger and get that. Okay, Nels has got a, a little bit of Mark of the Ninja ready to go here. So tell us a little bit about the area in the game that we're about to jump into. Yep, so at this point, this is pretty early on in the game. This is the third level. Um, kind of the game opens with your ninja as part of a clan that's mm -hmm. sort of survived from ancient, you know, ancient feudal Japan into the modern day. Um, but the game opens with your clan being attacked by this uh, this private mercenary company. Okay. Um, sort of like a Blackwater-esque thing. Gotcha. Um, and then you're not really sure why they attacked you, but you know, to defend yourself and ensure that you don't get assaulted by them again, you're dispatched to eliminate the, the head of, of the PMC. Um, so this is, uh, you've kind of infiltrated their compound, but now you're trying to figure out exactly where this guy is so that you can, you can take him out. Awesome, let's get started. Yeah. So this is that uh, a grappling hook thing you mentioned. Um, one of the things I like, this is, this is kind of awesome. Not only can you use the grappling hook to get to different points, but you can actually use it to hang underneath those hiding points. Oh, nice. Uh, hanging points. Um, and of course, if that were a little close to the ground and there was some guy walking underneath you, well, you could do unfortunate things to him if you so desire. So I can um, see that sort of like foggy field of view that you're yeah, talking exactly about right. there. So, yeah, exactly right. So I can pan the camera down there. I'm like, oh, I don't know what's down there. And then all of a sudden, that's neat. So you get kind of a general view of the layout, but we didn't see that guy there at all. Yeah, exactly. The and then when he disappears, you can see there's like a little bit of a red outline for where he was for just a moment. Yeah. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to try to compromise my sneakiness right now, but if guards are aware of you and they're following you, the same thing happens but in reverse. So when you break a line of sight with them, there's like a little gray outline of the last spot they saw you. Oh, cool. So you kind of know, okay, well that's where they're going to go looking for me, so I should be not around there. <laughs> How did you come up with the with the set of indicators that you wanted to keep in? Things um, like that. A whole lot of play testing. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, like, especially when it comes to doing things that don't really exist, like, oh, surprise, a 2D stealth game. Um, you just gotta play test and play test and play test. Oh man, I am not good because I got caught by that dog already. But fortunately he's just a dog, so he can't follow yeah. me up here. He can't really communicate what he saw. No, fortunately not. Um, yeah, so then you know you can dispatch guys with stealth kills to your desire. Um, one of the other things you can do to hide is we have some objects in the environment that you can sort of duck into to hide in. Okay. Um, but you can also use that instead to sneak away hidden dead guys. There you go. But that means that you can't hide in there yourself because one, gross. <laughs> um, <laughs> because ninjas are very worried about cross contamination. That's right, exactly. Um, so it's kind of like a little bit of, bit of a risk reward thing there, right? So it's like, okay, am I going to take this guy out? It's going to compromise my ability to hide there. I should make sure that I have another safe path to move, move through this space um, so that he doesn't. So, like, his buddies won't stumble across his body, right? Gotcha. Yeah. How close do you get to that dog before he wakes up? Uh, 
since he's asleep, I think I can get pretty close, but I'm definitely not going to chance it. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to duck down here and vent. Um, that's another thing to to kind of like afford more navigation options for when you're in for when you're sneaking, even though it is 2D. There's like a lot of vents and stuff like that that you can get through. Um, so here, these lights are going on and off. If I'm really quick, I can move through them without these guys catching me. And what sort of a room do you assume that is where they have lights that do that? A poorly powered one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, so the previous mission, you you destroy like a big generator. Okay. That shuts. That kind of makes the power in this level all weirdy. So it's not just a crazy only gameplay space. Um, but the thing obviously is kind of a little bit more stylized and abstract, right? Gotcha. Um, it's not you know, perfectly simulation. So I'm gonna chuck Maybe that it was dude like security down, guard disco or something. I don't know. <laughs> so that dude um, is uh, you'd see he's carrying like that big old shield. So yeah. if I were detected, any kind of like open fisticuffs melee combat wouldn't work on that guy. Additionally, every time he hears a noise, oh, let me see, can I? Will he hear that? No, he won't. But if I do this, maybe I can get him over here. No. Um, every time he hears a noise, he uh, he shoots a flare around uh, okay. that noise. So it's just like because. Like, since all these guys, I mean, you're an awesome ninja with a sword, right? So there isn't any notion of, like, hit points. You stab a guy and they, they perish. Um, so we're like, okay, well, how can we have different types of enemies that are interesting when all of them are just kind of one-shot kills, right? And we're like, well, the behavior of the enemies before you engage with them has to be different and varied and interesting. With those um, with those finishers that you're doing on people, those kind of stealth kills, are there different versions of those that oh, you get? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Actually, so this thing right here is um, kind of an upgrade point. Uh, so every level... How convenient! How convenient! Unfortunately, everything is locked. Um, <laughs> but you can imagine that, like, yeah, broadly, there are three categories of upgrades in the game. And it's not okay. like, there's not like a big complicated skill tree or anything. Mm -hmm. It's, there are a number of stealth kills, um, items that are more about distracting and manipulating guys, and items that are a little bit more aggressive. But even then, they're still all about being sneaky and stealthy and all that. Gotcha. And actually, you can technically get through the entire game without killing any of the enemies. Nice. There are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not gonna say it's as easy, <laughs> but it's certainly possible, um, which is cool. I think, like, at its at its you know most basic level, the game is really about giving people a, a good understanding of the different systems in the game, interesting tools and items at their disposal, and then just saying approach these encounters as you wish. Gotcha. Like, it's really all about that. Like, that's kind of the most. That, I mean, that was the goal anyway, and that ends up being one of the most edifying things is that. In some of the playtests we run, you know, someone just without any kind of prompting or anything said, "Oh yeah, it was really cool. I finished that thing, but it felt like there were a bunch of other ways I could have done it." I'm like, "Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted. <laughs> I didn't even have to pay you to say that. So that's awesome." Um, so yeah, in terms of different stealth kills, though, like this one, you can see I'm kind of creeping in the vent. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna wait till this dude's buddy looks away, and oh, turn. Then I'm just gonna grab this dude and pull him oh. into the vent. But if you don't hit that active stealth kill, um, you still kill the guy because yeah. you're a ninja with a sword. He's going to die. But he makes a bunch of noise, and you actually end up outside of the vent instead of inside of it. So in this particular case, his, his buddy would have heard, and things would have been uh, very not good for me. In this case, he just thinks that maybe you went into the vent to get coffee. Yeah, he's just going to go take a, <laughs> take a vent, vent break. Can't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, is, it is stylized. Right. Spider kill a guy. Uh, I don't have that one unlocked currently. Okay. I know. I know, otherwise it's super bloody cool. But I can do this at least, which is also pretty sweet. So um, another one of the things is that uh, like the, I, I, we very, very much wanted the game to kind of close what I, what I call a, a gulf of execution okay. between what people want to be able to do, what reasonably the character could do, but might be challenging just because like you have to be, become very, very fluent in the controls, right? Okay. So something like this where so one of the ways to kind of narrow that gulf of execution, um, whenever you hold down the left trigger, the game goes into an aiming mode. And in the aiming mode, everything in the game pauses. It's completely perfectly paused. So you can do something like this, where if I was, say, like dropping, actually, I'm going to try to do it. Oh, I released the thing is shot. Never mind. But hypothetically, you could do something where, like, I'm on this perch point, I drop, and then I just hit the aiming. Well, no. Well, it would be more like... So you could... I could drop, oh. see, freeze, and mirror. So I could actually hit those three things... Um, in midair, he would shoot, and then I'd land and be safe. Do we have uh, Do we have a release date, price, yep. platforms, yep. Yep. all that stuff? The, uh, the game is coming out on September 7th okay. on Xbox Live Arcade. Um, we haven't finalized the price, but it's not going to be anything surprising. 
Right on, man. So, yeah. uh, thanks for coming in and showing this of off. Course. Looks awesome. Pleasure. To keep up with the development of Mark of the Ninja until the 7th, you can check out markoftheninja.com. That's super easy. And be sure you're subscribed here at Rev3 Games for all kinds of extra cool stuff. What kind of cool stuff? Well, like how about Double Fine in the studio next week to show yes. off a brand new project? How does that grab you? Subscribe, and we will see you then. Thank you.